G'day everyone. I'm just getting the turret skin ready to go back on the car and I've got three quite good sized rust repairs to do in it. Now none of these are actually bad horrific sort of rust areas but they all need a dressing. So I've got this patch in the middle at the front here where that inner rail was welded to it and it's got moisture between the seams. So it's rusted this section here and the rust has run around the corner and onto this bare metal surface on the inside here by a little bit. Once again not bad and it's to the point where if you just sandblasted it, painted it and put it back together, we could get away with just putting a bit of an edge through here and the worst of it, and that would work. But what I'm going to do is cut the whole piece out and I'll come right up in here into the window opening and put the join across this face across here. Not only is it easier to weld like that, but it's gonna make it a better job for the longevity of it. The first thing I have to do is get this area repaired up so that it'll sit back on the car. And it means just sort of tapping it out as straight as I can get it with hammer and dolly without any reference to the car. But I know the rough angle, I can get the little lumps and bumps out of it where I've had the chisel in it. And then we'll get it sitting on the car and we'll line it up and we'll put a few screws in it just to sort of secure it in the right location. And then we can look at taking the piece out the middle and making our repair on that and welding it back together. So this one's actually pretty easy. Okay, that looks good enough to go on. You might think of a roof as a pretty flimsy, floppy around sort of thing, but they're not, they're actually quite strong. So pick this up and bump it around and drop it onto the car. It's not gonna do it any real great damage. So, just one thing to remember, don't be afraid of it. It's not gonna leap out and bite you. When I um, took it apart, these leaded seams in here, I ran a tech screw through on each side and then removed it. So I've actually got an alignment hole. So what I'll do now is just belt those two screws back in and that's gonna automatically put all the back piece of the roof in the right location. Not only side to side, but front to back as well. So once we've got that done, we can go across clamp these two edges together here, make sure we've got alignment here, check our gap in the middle to make sure the glass is going to fit back into it, and then we can start thinking about what we're going to do for this repair in here. So we'll get those screws in and we'll be into it. So that's got our two screws in, and that's brought all this back piece of the roof, the back window opening, all back to where it should be. Just wants a vice grip putting onto it to help weld it together when we're going together, and I can push that down and the opening just lines up perfectly. This front corner here, same deal. It's got a cutting width distance across it. The side has sprung out a little bit, but that's the same thing. We've levered it and carried on with it. But for now, what we want is this windscreen opening sorted. So I can put a pair of vice grips on, clamp this corner back down here, do the same on the other side, and we should have our roof pretty much back to where it was when the factory put it on. Just putting those two clamps on, we're back to making the car solid. Once we start tying things together and making little box sections around the car, it puts all the strength back into the car. So if we come off the dash, and we are 22 and 7 sixteenths, bang on the money. So we've only got to bring this bottom piece up. And what I'm going to do is I'll clamp it and then screw it either side of our repair. And I'll put these two marks on. We're going to replace this whole piece through the middle here. So we need the car solid, so when we start welding it, our heat's not going to let the roof drop and create a new shape across the front here. And But prior to that, once we've got it in place, we can actually make sure that our replacement piece is going to be the same shape and it fits the roof exactly before we start chopping the roof up. So a few more clamps, clamp him up, a few tech screws, and we're into it. through that triple layer of steel for the pillar. So, 
made him work a bit harder. Now while we're working this, we want the rest of it as close to the factory shape as possible. Because once we start cutting and welding, we run the risk of new shapes occurring just because of the heat going into the panel and hot metal is soft metal so it will move and you also get the shrinkage on the weld. So we've got to get this one in here pretty snug and get a weld pretty much down the middle of this so it's supported by these two folds top and bottom. And I've got this screw in the middle just for now and it was mainly just to make sure I got the whole roof all the way across right before I start cutting into it and changing it. Naturally we'll have to pull that one out once we start making our piece of metal. But that all looks pretty good. So I've got a piece of, well, we call it one millimetre here in Australia. It's closer to 0.9 than it is to one millimetre, but it's just 20 gauge cold rolled steel. And it's the backstay of all our rust repairs and things like that on this era car. They're pretty much all made of this material. So important to have the cold rolled stuff because it's the most malleable that you're going to find easily. There's better stuff out there, but it's a bit hard to find. But this is pretty much what the cars were made of. So we'll put a fold in it and shape it up. I'll just add that I've painted this. It comes with absolutely no coating on it whatsoever and it goes rusty very quickly. And I live not very far from the big blue ocean and so things tend to go rusty around here. So this is just painted with a single pack etch primer and it seems to be what works well for me. When I look at a lot of stuff in metal shaping groups on Facebook and places like that and you see all these places that are far away from the coast and they've got miles of this beautiful shining bare steel and they've shaped it up into wonderful shapes and they've got a car shell sitting in bare steel and it just looks absolutely gorgeous and all I've got is this boring battleship grey. So we'll just put a fold in it and it's pretty much just a right angle bend. The amount of curve in it this way, we can nearly bend it with our hands, we can get it folded and we can clamp one end down, pull the other end down with a pair of vice grips and that's going to want to pull the top edge forward a little bit. We can get there with our panel hammer and just work our way across there and we'll get a piece of metal pretty much to the shape of the car without a lot of effort. So we'll just belt a right angle fold into it and get into it. Now we could just use the shrinker and stretcher and that will work too, but this is just an easy way of getting this to work in this sort of spot. Now, because it is just clamped there, as soon as you let it go, it's gonna spring back. If we get the hammer and run across it, we'll get it to stay almost where we want it. Got a little bit in there, it's trying to make a liar of me, that's all it is, because I said how easy it was going to be. So, plan A doesn't work, we move on to plan B. This thickness material will bend by hand. So that's got that looking pretty close to where we want it and that sits in there. So what I'm going to do now, because I can't mark this top edge to get a nice neat cut line with the piece still here on the bottom. So I will cut this bottom ledge off all the way across and get it so we've got a nice snug fit for it to sit in there and then we can put it back on the car and we'll clamp it all in place and get it sitting snugly in line on each end and then it should be sitting to the right shape through the middle and then we can mark the actual edge of the roof. Now that should give us a nice neat line that we can work back to 
with no gaps. So if we cut that nicely and get it all fitting together as sweet, when we weld it, we won't get a lot of distortion because there's just nowhere for the metal to shrink to. So if we've got even like a half a millimetre gap in a few spots and things like that, once you weld it, that's an area that that weld can just shrink up and drag the roof in with it. So we don't want that. So we'll try our hardest to get it a nice, neat, tidy fit and go from there. So we'll, rip, we'll rip the roof off and um, cut some metal out of it. Okay, that fits nicely into the gap in that bottom lip. So what I'll do is just get rid of all this ledge off the bottom and I can come up a quarter of an inch or so and it doesn't matter because um, all that's going to be waste. So I'll just pull that off with the angle grinder because that'll be the quickest and the easiest way to do it. And then you can see what I mean now. Once I set that into the same line as this folded edge, we will get a nice line across here and that way when we cut it this will actually just prop the roof up and hold it in place while we weld it and it should work a treat but this is Rob's shed and every time that I brag about something going to be easy and working well we have trouble so hopefully it's going to work well here is our rusty piece and there is a bit of rust pitting in there and with the roof off the car, we could have actually blasted that and treated that, and most of that wouldn't have been an issue. But like I say, we'll do it as a demonstration and we'll get it really nice. But we've got it back to good clean metal there on the seam, and it's good clean metal back this end as well. And I know from looking on the back of the roof that this rusty section here doesn't really go up much higher, so the piece we've made is gonna cover all that nicely. So we've got that hacked out and this piece will sit in there and I've got a screw hole just either side of where I've taken the piece out so once that goes back on the car and goes back onto the rail I can um, put those two screws in there and that'll hold everything where we want it to be so and this sort of repair could have been done on the car that wouldn't have been any drama with that either so if you just had a patch like this in the middle you could take a piece off that inner section and repair it and then take a piece out of here and repair that and not even have to worry about taking the top off but like I say it's not that hard to do. That's made our roof back to being nice and solid even though it's got a piece cut out of it which is what we want like all this tied together it's all just going to sit there and that's going to allow us to get our weld in there with no great dramas at all. That's got him dropped in. nice deep scribe line. So we're going to cut right up to it. I'm getting to the point where I need one of those jeweler's sorts of glasses with all the lenses that click down so I can see what I'm doing on some of these jobs. So anyway, we've got the, the powerful glasses on now to see the scratch line. Good to go now. 
At least if I cut it in the wrong spot, we can't really blame my glasses. And that should just about fit. I'll just grab our piece of metal and give it a trial, but I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, when we sit these top corners just in here in snug, we want that back edge to be flush, which is we've got that. So I'd say that's going to be pretty much where we want it. There's still a whisker tight on the end, and I'm talking just a whisker here. So um, probably easier to grind it than snip it, but I'll just snip a little smidge off this side. probably in the region of a quarter of a millimetre. So we've got that fitting pretty good now. What I'll do now is just get the grinder and I'll just take the paint and the rust off around here, the old windscreen sealant, and give it a nice clean up so it's good to weld. And then we'll assemble it back up in the car, get all our screws in and that'll hold the roof in the right shape. And then we should just be able to do an easy run across here with the welder. And Given the nature of what it is, we will do smaller welds. So instead of doing our usual 20 millimetres, three quarters of an inch that we can get away on most panels, I'm going to bring that back to half an inch or about 12 millimetres at a time. And we'll get all the tacks pretty close together before we actually start welding any of this. And just so that we don't get the heat coming in there, we don't get the shrinkage on the welds and the roof can actually have enough strength in there to stretch the welds back out as they're cooling and keep the roof in the line that it's supposed to be. Like the more work we put into it at this stage, the better we get it fitting, the more time we take to weld it, the less work we've got to do afterwards. Because naturally, if we drop this line a little bit on the car, there's not much we can do to repair it apart from fill it. So that's more time on the job and more paint preparation we've got to do further down the track. So ideally, we'd like to get this weld across here, finish all that and not have to do anything to this part of the roof. And then that's a really good repair. So we'll get a grinder and get into it. Using my little Rolock discs on the sander today because at this stage I'm not actually wanting to remove metal. All I want to do is get rid of the paint. And this one that's already been used for another job, so it's got a bit of wear on it. This car's still got the original paint on it. So I'm not trying to fight through multiple layers of paint where I might want a more aggressive disc. So this little 80 grit one will just rip the paint off and it'll take these little shreds of windscreen sealer out the way and then we'll be able to get into it and weld it easily. Where we're sanding on a sharp edge that we've cut like this, always keep the rotation of your disc so that the edge you're sanding with is running off the panel. If you start sanding it so it's running onto the panel, quite often these little discs will just hook into the edge. They'll push things away, break things, tear the disc and send bits and pieces all over the place. So just watch the rotation of your grinder and make sure that you're not actually trying to lift it up with the edge of the grinding disc. Ask me how I know all this. Even today I get a bit cocky sometimes working in corners and it wants to grab the disc too. And a bit of a problem. Look at that, nice shiny metal. Let's start back on the car. Comes back to this, put it together, pull it apart sort of stuff. But um, get him on there, clamp down, new piece in place and we'll be able to weld it. Because we've got a little bit of spring in our piece of metal, we've lost our piece of roof to fit it to. We're going to have to put a few tacks in and work our way across rather than sit it all in place and then weld it. So we've got a nice spot there where it's lined up. We've got one here. So we've got a spot in there and there and it's starting to swing forward here. We can just bend it in as we go. Get it sitting under that edge of the roof and get it spotted all the way across. Then we can come back and start working it. So that does look rather nice. It just actually snugs in there and it sits down on the other panel underneath it.
Now the natural thing that wants to happen is every time we put a weld on there that weld wants to shrink in every direction so that will actually want to curl the unsupported edge of this piece of metal up. We're going to have to live with that because I can't actually position it all the way across in one go. So I've got an old paint scraper that broke off decades ago and it's just a nice little thin one that I can put into gaps like this and just lever things down to get things to sit back in alignment again. after that nice little perfect butt. You don't want it to be overlapping. It's only going to create more work for us later on. There's a spot up there. It's in a little bit too far as well. We may have to just loosen the screws off a bit to let it move. But I can get a few little spots of weld in it where it's looking good though. like I might have to take the roof off again to get that one to line up. Uh, we've got a couple of spots. Our new piece is in behind the piece of roof here and it is in the corner and it's outside on the far end. So what I'm going to do is just take the roof off again and it comes down to that whole thing about staying in control of what you're doing. And I will get the hammer and dolly and I'll just correct those and get them sitting back together again and then we'll be able to put it back on and spot the corners together and we should be able to get it secured and once we get our series of tacks all the way across we'll be able to start welding it together properly. By hammering that last tack I can actually move this corner down a bit but the problem I've got, and I can see it now, is that it's a little bit tight on this end in the corner. It's just the way the piece of metal's cut. Let me see if I can lever it into place. Ah, uh, now we're winning. Let's 
got that end sitting pretty nice now. This one's dropped in behind. Naturally, we're going to need this edge pretty good to be able to weld it on the car because we won't be able to be working it as we go. We can only work from the one side. So if we get tacks in place and we find that we've got one edge or the other a little bit high, we can tap that down. But if we've got an obvious low spot, it's back to pulling the panel off the car again to get it right. So that lines up across there. In this corner, our new piece is just behind it, but it does bend around. That's got him lined up pretty good there. So I think we're nearly there. Now it comes down to how fussy you want to be. I like to get them pretty right and have a no fill repair through here, but. If you had a little bit of a mismatch, this is inside where the rubber seal goes. You can fill that quite easily. If it, you're having trouble getting it to line up and work. deliberately pulled both these bottom corners outside the roof line so that when I get on the car I can push them back in and clamp them down but I want to get the top corners on both ends spotted first. I've got my two little bottom corners set in place now. So that's got that all sitting together nicely. And this flange is sitting together all the way across the window opening. So that's got to be pretty close to being on the money all the way across. So what I can do now is just start welding some spots. A little mismatch just on that one. It might tap in. But this is one of those ones that you've got to be a little bit more patient with than the average repair. Grooves can be tricky so-and-sos. But the same thing, just take your time, follow the rules, don't get it too hot, don't weld too much in one go. Make sure your welds are all fully supported and it's all achievable.
making sure that everywhere I want to weld is perfectly butted together before I go. And I'm keeping the welds down to around about 12 millimetres, half an inch. And I'll let that cool now. There's, there's quite a bit of heat coming up into the roof. It's burning the paint on the corner there. Unsurprising, we're not very far off the edge there. But that's hot enough. I don't really want to make it any hotter for what I'm doing. Because once again, we're trying to keep this a no-fill repair. We don't want any distortion up here. We want that to remain flat. And we want to be able to grind that weld off and just say, that's good enough, we're finished. So we'll take five minutes or so, and we'll come back to it. This is at the point where I can hold my hand on it now. It's hotter at this end, naturally, that's where I finished welding than what it is up here. But I'm gonna leave it a bit longer. Once again, being a roof, we're just going to um, go easy on it. But it's coming together nicely. Everything's lining up. It's looking really good in the opening there. And uh, it's all gonna weld together quite well. The heat's spreading up, like there's warmth up here now that you can just detect that it's different from the cold metal of the roof. It's got a little bit of warmth spread in it here, but heat walks its way through a metal panel. So we'll just leave it a bit more. Like I say, it'd be just at the point now where I'd think about getting back on it, but I think a couple more minutes and let that cool down, and then we'll do a pass across it, and um, we'll be back to waiting for it to cool down again. You probably heard, I've just popped a couple of little holes in it just from probably my welding technique being a little bit slow for the area we're trying to weld. So we'll let that cool down. I can just come back and plug them up with the welder. There's no big dramas there. But um, just a little bit by little bit, the more weld we get in there, the more stable it will become. But the important thing is just take your time on this sort of repair. Like don't rush it at all. And uh, you'll get a really good result if you do. We just got back from having our lunch, so it's completely cooled down. But at this point in time, we've probably got a bit better than 50% of it welded up. And the roof is as straight as it was when it left the factory. So that's all coming up well. I can get back in there and start filling on the rest of these holes. And that'll just about get this done. So weld him up, grind him off, and we've got that repair done. Now, I'll throw this in while we're actually here. You'll notice with a lot of my stuff that I leave them as they were. Like This hasn't been blasted or primed or anything, it's just been left with the paint that was on the car. And I've seen so many projects in my career where somebody started them, 
put them away for a few years, they've been blasted and primed at the start or paint stripped and primed at the start and it's just gone rusty while it's been sitting in mothballs the whole time and you've got to go and repeat that process over again. So I tend to sort of leave them as ugly as I can for as long as I can and that way once I've got all of the repairs done and I actually choose to blast something and have it done we can just move on to the next stage and we can start prepping for paint and not only is it cost saving but it's just a better way to go about it because you're, you're not repeating processes, you're not wasting time with it and things like that. So that's why my projects just look like the way they are. They're just sort of ugly and dirty and I get into all the structural stuff and then we can make them pretty afterwards. And then they're really good. Here's the little corner I've started making for our curved windscreen. Now I've got the original piece of roof that came off this cross brace and one side, which was the left side, had already been cut off and used on another project, but I've got the intact driver side. So I've made this this morning just by folding it and then um, using the shrinker and the stretcher a little bit to get the profile right in the corner. And that's going to fit into here. Now I've decided to make it in two pieces just for ease of manufacture and we'll wind up with a weld through the middle just the same as what we're doing there and the other piece because we had a little bit of rust I've cut out here so I can trim that and fit that in there weld that up to where the curve starts and the other piece will just weld to the edge of the roof here and come around the corner and then I'll cut away the piece on the inside that we don't need on the original Kingswood sedan this pillar is a different pressing We've got a little recess in here for the lead seam to go into which actually tucks around the corner and the little turret skin actually winds up sitting in there so when they welded them together from factory the weld would actually be flush with the pillar, it wouldn't actually protrude. Ours is going to be a little bit different because we don't have that recess so all I'm going to do is just butt it in the corner and then we'll just get a MIG weld in there and we'll grind that to actually get it to flow through and get the shape right. So that's the start of our custom corner in our windscreen but from this because I've got the shape accurate to the right hand side of the roof I can now turn this over and make the same piece for the other side by matching it up to this one and that way I've got a left and a right that I know will match and once we reach the point where I can actually spot it to the car I can drop the windscreen in with the chrome moulding on it the rubber still on it and just make sure it's all going to work before we actually commit ourselves to welding it all in there. So just a, another little thing I'm playing with. It's the thing with while you're waiting for weld, if you've got another little project that you can actually go ahead with, you can get more things done instead of just standing around waiting for them to cool down. Now, we're still too hot, but it's pulled a little bit and we've got a little mismatch on that join. Just by tapping the high side, I can bring the two pieces of metal back into alignment. So it's just a matter of working across the spots you haven't welded and checking the alignment. But usually by this stage, if they are out of step, it's not by very much. And a few little taps, you don't have to hit it hard. And as you can see, holding the hammer right up near the neck of it, and I'm just going to little taps like that. And that's enough to just jar the two panels. So if they're sitting sort of offset, you can just walk them back underneath each other and then they'll line up again so they're ready to weld. And I've got the welder set 
so that even just one tack will burn right through the thickness of the metal and leave a bump on the other side so it gets full penetration and just means that you can't muck around when you start welding you've got to be moving or it'll just melt a hole in it cooling down okay I've had a question from the um, audience here about my hammer my hammer and I have been together for a long, long time and I bought this hammer in the mid-1980s and it's a Sykes, it's made in England, they're a very good hammer and um, the original handle's long gone, it's had several replacements. It's now wearing a snap-on handle, mainly because they're a good quality handle that you can get locally. Um, Sykes stuff's a bit harder to get, it'll come off the internet but not many people stock it in Western Australia. The weld on the end. Many years ago I was repairing a roof and I actually welded a piece into a roof. It was rusted all the way across and I cut a strip out 14, 15 inches wide and actually welded the panel in there with the torch. And it, as I was going, hammering all the way and the end just broke, just came off and there was this jagged sort of section where it came across the end there. And I thought, well, oh, it's interesting. So I, um, welded it back together to um, keep it alive and I bought a replacement but I've never really bonded with the replacement this is my favorite and um, every few years the weld lets go and breaks off so I've just got in the habit of when it does that I just grind the weld away make it back to a V and weld the piece back on the end and it works again but you can see from the end of it that little wedge peens about half the height that was originally and that's just where I've worn it away just using it on things and it's been on the concrete a lot so it's got flats on the sides of the head where it just lays on the concrete and gets picked up all the time so yeah but old hammers they can tell stories if they can talk it's like everything I love old garage equipment we can weld Well, that's got the bulk of it done now. Got a few spots that need going. This, one of the holes I've still got a spot up and there's a patch next to that I haven't welded. So next pass I'll do the bit that I haven't done and then the, after that I'll fill the hole in. And the spot over there is a bit of a reach. I might go around the other side and get that one. Now, it's always important to remain comfortable while you're welding. If you're stretched right out and trying to reach something, you're never going to do a good weld. So. I'm working from here just to get a good camera angle, but to do that other corner I'll go around the other side, make that a bit nicer, and I'll pull this screw out once all this cools down, I can weld this little corner down here and get that piece joined together on the window flange. But so far so good, the roof looks really nice, and our repair's coming up a treat. So this will, well, all going well, touch wood, no fill repair, that's what I like.
it looks like we are just about there. One more bit over there, fill in this little hole here and rejoin where the screw is. So, let's give it a few minutes to cool. Okay, I think we're on the last little run. So we've got a bit of this corner here. And there was a hole over there. So that looks like we have got it welded all the way across. So what I'll do is it's going to be a lot easier to grind this off the car because I can set it up on a trestle and just get to it that way. So I'll rip it off and um, we'll get it ground up and we can have a look at it and go from there. So I am stoked guys. We have got this repair done. It is a no fill repair. The roof is still the shape it's supposed to be. We haven't changed anything, distorted anything. It is ground off to just flat metal all the way through there. And that's about as good as you get for doing a nice window opening like that. And it's all straightforward stuff. Like I say, follow the rules, take your time and get everything fitting nice before you start welding. And you can actually get there and you can do proper welds. None of this little tack here and a tack there and a tack there and try and pile them up on top of each other until you've sort of got a weld. Um, we actually welded it with proper weld and it finished off nicely, it ground up great. While we're here, we'll just talk about some of the other things we've got coming on this project. We've got to replace the bottom of the window opening, so that's going to be a one-piece repair all the way across there. And I've got the plenum apart, and it's work I did in the past with it, but that'll make it handy because we can take the top panel off and put it back on as we go. We've also got a lot of rust in the back wall of the cab. We're going to fix that up. And naturally, we've got our gutter sections to do here and our little radius corners in the roof. So I'm thinking next time we get back together, we might tackle these corners and get them out of the way. And then we'll work our way back into the back of the turret skin, repair the rust in that. And I've got a few things in mind there. One side is worse than the other. This is by far the worst side of the two. So I'm going to, once again, go too far with it, more than what's necessary for this car, but it'll show you guys an extreme way of repairing a gutter on a car that otherwise you might look at and think it's beyond repair or I'm going to have to source a part from another car. But I'll show you easy ways you can fix that up. And then on the other side, it's a really simple repair. It just needs a little patch putting in the corner. And so that one will be an easy peasy. Remember, if you like what you see, please subscribe. It helps us out a lot. And uh, we'll keep bringing you more great videos in the future. I'm Rob Teal. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you next time. Grooves can be tricky so-and-sos.